Without further ado. Without further ado, here we are. Um, without much ado about anything at all right exactly yeah. yeah i wonder how many titles he went through or if it was even he i've <laughs> i've recently stumbled into the quadrant of the internet where people debate these things and i hate to say it but the skeptics have uh, more their arguments are stronger than i was expecting so which uh, we aren't prepared for this conversation at all but no, we're um, not uh are you are, are you the, the the quadrant that you stumbled into was it the he was a he, but he wasn't the he we think he was, or was it a he was a she, or is it he was a conglomerate? Um, there are several credible theories. The basic theories are they? Uh, good point. Not theories. <laughs> hypotheses. I don't know what's gotten into me. I Probably don't a lack of sleep as Not a result. Not enough net, I think. Not <laughs> Indeed. No, so there are apparently schools of thought mm. and the central premise on which the skeptic community seems to all agree is that the guy whose name wasn't exactly Shakespeare, but was close, couldn't possibly have written them based on who he was and what he would have known and whether he was even literate. Um, and then the question is, well, who did write them? And there are apparently a couple of different schools of thought, uh, whether it was uh, uh, this guy at Oxford whose name escapes me or whether it was uh, Francis Bacon, apparently, as a contender. Um, that I didn't know. But let's just say you don't want to delve into this unless you're ready to entertain <laughs> the possibility that uh, much of what you learned in school just ain't right. Yeah. Well, I mean, so we... Yeah, not, I, I have I have delved briefly a long time ago, back when it was like, oh, maybe he was a woman. Like, really? Are you sure? Okay. Um, but it when you raised this issue with me, I don't know, a few months ago, because you had fallen into this particular hole, you found yourself trapped like a bear trap at the bottom of it. Like, I can't get, I never wanted this. I can't get out. Uh, I said to you, you know, of all of the things, of all of the things that we were told were certain, that we were taught as if this, like, you don't have to question this one at all. From school, the idea that maybe William Shakespeare isn't who we thought he was or he didn't write the stuff, that that's like really low on the list of things that would plague me. Like, that's okay. Right. No. If, if, if that turns out to be true, okay. Right. What difference does it make? It's, what it, difference you know, does it make? Well, yeah. I mean, the problem is it does make a difference. Um, to, I mean, to some questions. Here, let me, sure. let me just be completely transparent about this. I fell into this rabbit hole. I returned to this rabbit hole recently when somebody I Once met... your leg had healed from the previous fall. <laughs> right, exactly. Um, I did encounter this, an essay by Curtis Yarvin, mm -hmm. who is obviously a very controversial figure. Mm -hmm. um, this is a topic on which he actually does have a kind of a political slant on it. But... Um, but anyway, I thought his argument was pretty compelling, and it came from the place that I... I most appreciate, which is he uh, was ready to just dismiss this nonsense until mm -hmm. he started delving and it was like, oh, geez, this is more credible than I thought. And so he lays out yep. uh, the case for one of the um, one of the schools of thought and he explains why it would make a lot of sense and why it would make a lot of sense of things in shakespeare which is why it matters mm -hmm. right it doesn't really matter if some person yeah. you don't know wasn't the actual person but right? it was another person right yeah. who who had a perspective that we now impose different things onto because of our sense of who shakespeare was and so mm -hmm. I, I think it is it is very important from the perspective of understanding the content of Shakespeare. It is not very important from the perspective of somebody, uh, you know, who our only familiarity is through his work and the study of it. And if it was actually somebody else who we are only familiar with through the study of uh, their work, you know, okay, it's an interesting fact, but it's not. Uh, and and it, for those of us who read some Shakespeare, uh, who were like, you know, I was a literature major for a couple of years, you know, who, who really read some Shakespeare and who admired it and who thought about it. And we've gone to a number of, of plays put on by the wonderful um, Oregon Shakespeare Company down in Ashland, mostly. Although I also, when my parents lived in London, we went to the Globe a few times and saw a number of Shakespeare plays there. Um, even with that level of sort of passing literate familiarity, I'm not a historian, so I don't know who else's historical record will be changed by the fact that they might have been doing all the writing. And so that that's what I meant by who cares. Like, some people will care, for sure. Uh, but in terms of, oh my god, this destroys everything, like, nope, 
the work is still the work. I mean, it may, maybe maybe for me this gets down to that question, and this was actually something that was a live, very live, very live argument in literature circles back when I was studying literature in school, which was: Do you take the work of art at on its face, or do you need to incorporate into it an understanding of the moment in time? the personality and biography and like developmental trajectory and 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 you know wealth and other demographics of the person who created the art and you know frankly i can see an argument for either and at least in the late 80s early 90s when i was engaged in these sorts of um, when i was forced into these sorts of conversations in college classrooms uh, it seemed like you had to take one or the other of these positions and uh in terms of if you're if you are in any way interested, compelled by the idea that an art, a piece of art, a work of art once made should be able to stand on its own, then the questions about who Shakespeare might actually be, while potentially interesting, while potentially bearing some impact on how other people might interpret it, uh, can be relegated to a different conversation. You can still assess Much Ado About Nothing, for instance, which is how we got here, um, on its own recognizance. Here is why you are 100% slightly wrong. 100% slightly wrong? 100% wrong. slightly wrong. I don't know what that means. It doesn't mean a damn thing. I just... You're obviously mostly right, but um, before you say this, yes. I will say that there is one thing that I really like about this temporary setup that we've got going here, mm -hmm. which is that while it, it's a little harder for us to look at one another, I can make on, eye contact with our producer, who is also our 18-year-old son, and we can roll our eyes at each other when you say things like that. Right. I prefer to bulge my eyes at him if there are <laughs> things that require that communication. But yes. in any case, um, but in the door in the in the old studio. Uh, you couldn't do it. We couldn't see him. Here is why you are 100% slightly wrong. Um, were it Bacon? Were it Francis. Bacon? Yeah, not yes. uh, Kevin. Or, were, or delicious sizzling. I mean, actually, if it were in your house for hours afterwards. If it were Kevin Bacon, that would be even more interesting. Although Kevin Bacon is less interesting because it would imply time travel and that would be important. Potentially, but I digress. This has nothing to do with why I'm 100% slightly wrong. Yeah, this is not, has nothing to do with why you're 100% slightly wrong. You're 100% slightly wrong because were it Bacon, then the question is, why is this already transcendent figure transcendent in a second modality? And I believe that this, you and I mm. spent a year working on the question of how to build a school to generate hyper-competence, right? The kind of hyper-competence we occasionally see in the world. And I would argue that somebody like da Vinci, for example, oh, hyper-competent. And the mm -hmm. point is, I personally, I don't believe that has anything to do, could not logically be the result of unusual genes. What that is, mm -hmm. is some sort of unusual trajectory that has caused the right set of skills to accumulate in the right way so that you get the synergies. And if Bacon is a second example of this, then the point is, well, we there's nothing more important than figuring out what that juxtaposition of capacities is and where it comes from, because if you can produce it for people young enough to get the benefit, the point is we could have more such hyper-competent people and there's nothing that could be more important than that.